has a plan on the table to cut the rate of indexation, which means that pensioners will be up to $80 a week worse off in the future because of the Abbott government's broken promises. Today, for the first time, we see the Abbott government admitting after ten and a half months of dishonesty and lying to Australia's pensions that their pension proposals are not fair. We call upon the Abbott government to drop unreservedly, with no uh, fingers crossed or any qualifications, any hidden strings, to drop unreservedly their attack on pensioners and their $80 a week cut to pensions. I might ask my colleague Jenny Macklin to say a few extra words about the government's unfair measures on pensioners. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, uh, everyone. And first of all, if I could say a very big thank you to everybody here at the Bandura Italian Senior Citizens. Uh, Andrew Giles and I are regular visitors here. We love this club. We love the people here because they look after each other so wonderfully. I do want to say uh, to Bill Shorten a very, very big thank you, Bill, uh, for coming here and wishing our senior citizens here in Bandura a very, very happy Easter. Uh, it has really given them uh, enormous pleasure to have you here today, so we appreciate it very, very much. It is uh, a very big issue for pensioners that uh, Mr Abbott broke his promise. At the last election, Mr Abbott said that uh, he would not change the pension. There would be no cuts to pensions. And then in the budget, Mr Abbott and Mr Hockey announced a huge change to the pension that if they got it through the parliament would mean that pensioners would be $80 a week worse off over the next decade. Just yesterday, I had a pensioner in my own electorate say uh, how worried he was about this cut to the pension that uh, Tony Abbott has been determined to deliver. And I just want to say to Mr Abbott, today's the day when you should finally admit that you got it wrong and you should drop this pension cut. It is unfair and pensioners do not deserve to have this hanging over their heads at this time in their lives. Are there any questions? Well, first things first. What we've seen is the first uh, chink in the Abbott armour of their unfair budget about pension cuts. For Scott Morrison to uh, flag uh, that he may or may not have any other ideas is a recognition and an admission that Australians, not just pensioners, but Australians don't want unfair $80 a week cuts to the pension. In terms of their other measures, yet again, this is a, a chaotic government. They're barely a month out from the budget, sending up thought bubbles. ACOS has written to the minister. The minister says that's an interesting letter. And this isn't government. This, is, uh, this isn't government by reason and evidence. This is government by thought bubble. They should uh, just first and foremost drop their attacks on the pension, come clean, admit the truth, say you got it wrong, Tony Abbott, say you won't touch people's pensions. Uh, in terms of reforms to our welfare system, I'll ask Jenny Macklin to uh, supplement this answer. Labor has always been up for making sure that we have the fairest possible system. But pensioners of Australia should not have to consider the Abbott government's budget measures with a gun to their head, which is cuts to $80 a week in pension indexation. Jenny? The important thing to remember is that Labor in government delivered the biggest improvement to the pension in its 100 years of history. We delivered a big increase to the base rate of the pension so that the poorest pensioners would in fact be better off. We did also at that time change the income test to make it fairer, to actually uh, make a change that uh, uh, really made some uh, 
modifications to that which um, Peter Costello and John Howard had made in their time in government. So we've demonstrated that we're always willing to do the right thing by pensioners, to deliver a decent increase to make sure that pensioners can actually have a decent standard of living on the pension, but also to make sure that it's fair. Thanks, Jenny. Well, first of all, we haven't got a specific proposal from the government on the table, but if there is concern by the government about relieving any pressure on the age pension, there's a policy which Labor has already articulated waiting for them just to pick up. It's increased the levels of compulsory superannuation. Before the last election, the Abbott government said they would freeze increases to superannuation for two years. Then at their uh, notorious budget last year, they said they'd freeze it for four years. Then they did a dirty deal with Clive Palmer and now they're saying they'll freeze superannuation for six years. Logic, it, logic and common sense dictate that you're going to have more people on the age pension if you have uh, people with smaller and lower superannuation account balances. So the first thing we can do is rather than the Abbott government starting to uh, threaten pensioners with their cuts, what they should do is reverse their crazy refusal uh, to increase superannuation. If people are encouraged, ordinary people on modest incomes are encouraged to be able to save more for their retirement, then logic says there'll be less demand on the pension in future years and the numbers back that up. Well, I don't accept that proposition at all. And let me tell you what are the government's confusing signals on their pension cuts means it says a lot about the government that we are 11 months after their last budget and they still don't know if they want to go ahead with their unfair pension cuts or not. It says a lot about this government that you've got ministers wandering, uh, wandering around the nation saying something sounds like a good idea a month out from the budget. They haven't done their homework. Labor has got clear policies in terms of superannuation. If we don't support the government's cuts to uh, low-income superannuation recipients, where they've taken away uh, tax support and relief for those people who earn less than $37,000 a year. Labor has a clear policy to increase superannuation contributions from 9.5% because we think that too many Australians' account balances and superannuation is too low. When it comes to taxation and other matters, Labor's put forward a fully costed proposition on multinational taxation. And as soon as we did that, Joe Hockey blunders out of the bush and immediately swats that down. Then he comes up reacting to Labor's agenda with his so-called Google tax, which has now drawn the ire of tax experts who do believe in a fair share by multinationals to be paid in taxation, but think that the uh, Abbott government's Google tax is a disaster waiting to happen. And when it comes to the pension, Labor does have a very clear policy. We don't support cutting it by $80 a week. Labor's got a very clear policy when it comes to defending the pension and attacking election promises. And what these people in this room, who've worked hard their whole lives, they came here at a young age as migrants, paid their taxes, raised their kids and uh, made sure that this community's a better place to live, is they just want to know that Tony Abbott won't cut the pension. The independent, I believe fundamentally that uh, politicians' conditions should be set by an independent remuneration tribunal. The independent remuneration tribunal has made its decision and I'm fine with that. Uh, if you're asking about where the threshold should be in terms of, I couldn't quite hear over the noise of the audience, uh, if you were saying about thresholds, was yeah, it? Right. You're talking about income thresholds or re assets, test. assets test. Well, what I believe is that when it comes to the family home, that should be exempt. Uh, and we think that the government needs to, again, with this latest flurry of confusing signals, rule out touching the family home. In terms of uh, the rest of the propositions, you're asking me to talk about scenarios which the government have not put on the table, but I'd refer you to uh, Jenny Macklin's earlier answer. Labor believes that the age pension should be increased in a reasonable manner. That's why we put in the largest increase 
uh, relatively in 100 years. The people on the age pension are not receiving a king's ransom. It is not an overly generous payment at all. In terms of the threshold, Labor's always been willing to examine how the, uh, all of the income policies that we have interact with each other. But let's be really clear, there is no proposal from the Abbott government on the table. The only proposal from the Abbott government on the table is to cut pension rate of indexation. The only proposal the Abbott government's got is this disaster of a broken promise, which would see Australian pensioners, Australian age pensioners, $80 a week worse off.